Well, there's a great quote from Isaac Bacchus from 1773, who was a Baptist minister. Uh, again, 1773. He said, religious matters are to be separated from the jurisdiction of the state, church, state, separated. So he said, not because the religious matters are beneath the interest of the state, but quite to the contrary, because the religious matters are too high and holy and thus are beyond the competence of the state. So again, you can see the point here. It's not that the church should have no role in the government. It's clearly this wall exists so that the government should have no role in the affairs of the church because the church is of greater value, of greater importance than the state. But when you see abortion activists and pro-gay marriage and blah, 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 all these leftists today, when they talk about the separated church and state, they mean the opposite. They have it backwards. They say that the church should have no role in the government. But that's not what it means at all. Which leads us to Thomas Jefferson. This is what most people think of when they think of separation of church and state. So what's this about when Thomas Jefferson wrote it? It's not in the Constitution. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. It was a letter. So the Danbury Baptists were in Connecticut. It was 1801. And they wrote a letter to the newly elected president, Thomas Jefferson. And they were very worried, these Baptists were. Again, uh, the, the Rhode Island church was a Baptist church. The guy we just quoted was Baptist. All these people are Baptists, right? So there, this Baptist church was very worried that, that Thomas Jefferson uh, was going to interfere in their Baptist religious practices. So they wrote a letter to the president saying, uh, are we sure, can we be sure, can we be confident that you, the government, are not going to interfere in what we do as a church? And here's what the, the Danbury Baptist wrote, among other things. Our sentiments are uniformly on the side of religious liberty, that religion is at all times and places a matter between God and individuals, and that no man ought to suffer a name, person, or effects on account of his religious opinions, that the legitimate powers of civil government extend no further than to punish the man who works ill to his neighbors. In other words, Mr. President, Mr. Jefferson, will you leave us alone to practice our religion as we see fit? And they went on, they asked Thomas Jefferson if religious freedom is it a favor granted by the government or is it an, an inalienable right that every person has? And Thomas Jefferson, two months later, January like 1st, 1802, responded with this. This is Thomas Jefferson. Believing with you, so I agree with you, that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to no one for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only, not opinions. I contemplate with sovereign reverence that whole act or that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislator Here's the First Amendment. Shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. That is a reference to Roger Williams and Isaiah 5. Clear as day. The Baptist said, will you interfere with our religious practices? And Thomas Jefferson said, no. There is a wall of separation between the government and your religious practices. It is a great perversion to suggest that this wall means religion should have no role in government or that religion should then have no role in the lives of our representatives or even in their official duties. It's ridiculous. It's the exact opposite of what the reality is. And we can prove that, of course, Thomas Jefferson, he ended his letter to the Danbury Baptist saying, uh, I, I appreciate your, your kind prayers for the protection and blessing of the common father and creator of man, right? If Thomas Jefferson believed that a president should never have anything to do with religion ever, then he wouldn't have ended the letter like that. Not to mention every other thing our founders have ever said about religion and the importance of it. I think the clearest quote of them all, uh, to just summarize all the quotes from our founding fathers about the importance of religion, uh, is John Adams. He said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams said, you must be a moral and religious people. The idea that the church should have no affair and uh, no, no, no impact on the role of the state will be laughable by our founding fathers, but that is the common belief today and it is completely backwards. So there's the full story. God and Isaiah 
saying that if you sin, I will break down your wall and trample your vineyard, Israel. Roger Williams in the 1600s in Rhode Island, saying that there's a wall of separation between the ungodly government and the godly church. Let's keep that wall strong so that the church can remain free from government control. And then Thomas Jefferson assuring the Baptist in Connecticut that the government will play no role in the affairs of their church. There's a wall separating the government from the church. Completely flipped on its head to people who know no better today. Believe, people, most people believe, almost everyone will believe that it now says that you, that the, excuse me, that the church should have no influence on government. That the church should have uh, no role in our public schools. That there should be no nativity displays, no Ten Commandments in courthouses, and all this other nonsense. But now you know the full story. Don't let people get away with this anymore. The more they remove God from our culture, the more pagan we become. And as Isaiah warned, we will get trampled. Separation of church and state. You know, it's not in the Constitution, it's not in the Declaration of Independence. Where did that term come from. It actually is before Thomas Jefferson. We need to understand this. Why? Because we live in a pagan culture and the pagan church is imposing their morals and values on you. And if you try to do anything about it, oh, there's a separation of church and state. It's like, no, no, no. You guys got that completely backwards. Abortion, gay marriage, transgender kids. What is going on? We need to fully understand the true meaning of separation of church and state. It's the opposite of what they tell you it is. That is on our special Right now, Separates Church and State, available on our app, the First TV app. You can download that on any app store and at thefirsttv.com.